Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melvin Way. You can search for my name at any time on Google or YouTube to find my videos and my channel. This is a typical Haas avocado, an extra large one grown in California. I live in San Diego so that bodes well for me because I have more or less the same climate, probably further south. I'm not sure whether this was grown in the Imperial Valley or not, but this one is ripe and ready to eat. It has a great texture and appearance. So that's the seed right there, the pale circular region you see on one of the poles. That's where the root will come out of after this cracks open. And on the other side, on the other pole, this one is asymmetrical though. It's a little bit more dark skinned and pointy. So that's how you can orient an avocado seed. And don't worry, that little thing protruding from the bottom, that's not the root. You'll see this whole thing crack open and a root will eventually come out, but it's a slow process. So for this much bigger seed, it's already day two. I ate this avocado two days ago and the seed is much bigger and it's a darker coloration, both good signs. So two days ago, I wiped away the fatty fruit flesh, the residue with paper towels. I washed it with a mildly soapy sponge. Then I kept this seed in a tissue wrapped in a damp um, wiping cloth and it completely dried out at one point but then I just turned on the tap water and uh, threw some water on that to get it wet again and lo and behold two days later I have what you see before me so this is a three foot tube about 91.44 centimeters you can see the static um, taking effect from my gloves on the little bits of dirt inside so it's half sand half clay soil and this seed is so big it's almost hard to get it in there well you can get it in there like that but then the real problem is maneuvering it to get the pole to face the bottom so I have this on fast forward as I do some other parts of uh, this video and many others where I don't need to show you everything at 1x speed that would just be boring so make sure you leave enough room on top, orient the seed correctly, take your time, then bury it with more sand and dirt. So this 50% sand, 50% clay soil mixture. The clay soil is from the local hills outside. Um, it's proven to be really good of a growing medium for my plants in 2019. So that's why I'm going with that. So I've heard that roots don't like temperatures over 85 Fahrenheit and that's slightly a hair under 30 Celsius. So for germination, at least in my limited experience, constant warm temperatures help. Indoors is better in my experience and that's because at nighttime the indoors temperature stays roughly the same. So I live in an apartment especially so it's pretty hot and I live on the third floor and have a third floor balcony so that does affect the plant growing but for germination purposes it's really good so surface dirt from the outdoors um, will contain some organic detritus and you saw that floating around I could just scoop some of that away from the edges with a, a tissue or something like that so there you have it I have my setup it's wrapped to preserve moisture and it's pretty much ready to go so on day 53, I saw roots on three days ago and I was questioning my new germination method the entire time because my first series of avocado growing germination in 2016 saw a red shoot come out on day 45. So I thought this method had failed, but when I saw those roots, I was very happy. And on day 53, I saw this. So avocado seeds take forever to send out shoots, even if they crack open fast like this one did on day two. Um, I'm sure people have examples where their avocado seeds germinated much quicker. Um, by how much quicker, I'm not sure. It would depend on how ripe your fruit is and whether the seed had the opportunity to start developing within your avocado before you uh, took it out and clean the seed for planting so um, yeah it's been warm here it's been about 80 Fahrenheit uh, slightly under consistently indoors and I have to turn on the air conditioning 
So it's day 56 and you can see the roots have gotten deeper and there are some around on the other side as well. But I have no idea if there's a central tap root that we can't see going through the center of all this or if the roots sort of sway to one side or not. We just don't know. And it turns out this giant seed is polyembryonic. I didn't know avocado seeds could be polyembryonic. I just assumed they were monoembryonic. And here we have a beautiful example of uh, two shoots coming out of one avocado seed. So they're independent plants, I think. And they can be separated later on, although I'm not going to do that. I have such limited space here um, horizontally. So there's no way I'm going to go in there and dig at this early stage to do anything to separate them. So it's day 61. I moved my tube outdoors to get natural sunlight. Right now I'm filming at night when it's cool. Um, and I don't have the sun on me with these uh, LED panels flanking to my sides. So due to work reasons, I can't film a lot during the day. Definitely not during the weekdays. And on the weekends, um, it really depends because there's no sunlight afternoon directly hitting this balcony. It's all just indirect light. So depending on how I have my camera angled, everything could be um, just backlit. So it makes for horrible videography, but the LED panels um, takes care of all that. It's just that you won't see many um, noonday scenes in my recent growing videos. So this thing is quite curved. That's just due to phototropism. And I think we're going to struggle with that for a little bit. Um, I don't think my mango seedling, which is uh, already on its way to a fourth episode, has gone through this kind of curvature, this kind of phototropism. So I'm spraying everything down to get all that um, organic detritus off the sides. It almost sort of resembles potting mix to a little degree, but make no mistake, this tube is almost entirely like 99%. Um, half sand and half clay soil. So I poke holes in the bottom of the plastic that I taped there with a needle about 50 times for drainage. I don't show that process in this video but I did in my growing a mango seedling in a tube series which precedes this by a few weeks. That's going on to its fourth episode already. It's day 64. I think based on what we see here Potentially some of the roots in the center of the soil mass could have already hit the halfway mark. So the root system always goes deep and fast. The shoots come out much later. You need good aeration for good root growth. The roots need to be able to breathe. It's not water that kills plants. It's the lack of oxygen that kills off the root system and causes everything to rot. So as you can see here, the the appearance of this, um, these two shoots, sort of resembles um, cordyceps uh, fungi that I've seen in nature documentaries that um, kills ants and other things and just bursts out of their bodies. But uh, it is beautiful, the coloration, and the leaves are sort of a yellow in the beginning. So this is a mouthwash. It's just a bottle I'm using. This is dissolved imidacloprid. It's the most popular insecticide in the world. So based on my previous avocado growing experience and all my mango growing, um, there's going to be a lot of pests gunning for this plant. So I'm going to provide systemic pest resistance. The way imidacloprid works is it gets into the roots and goes all the way to the foliage. And if bugs try to feed on the foliage, they'll get poisoned and die. So it won't prevent bugs and other pests such as spider mites from being attracted to this plant and feeding on it but it will prevent them from um, basically profiting off of this plant's life and reproducing like crazy which is what they always do so I'll provide a second systemic dose um, the problem with a tube like this is you can't water a lot at once and you have to wait for things to drain. If the soil dries out too much because it has some clay in it, it tends to not absorb very quickly. When clay is dry, it doesn't absorb very fast. Now, if this were 100% sand, 
the water would just go through like instantly. But while sand is and can be a great growing medium, it's very um, lacking in nutrients. Although I have heard of people growing strawberries and other things in just pure sand and having it work. So in my case, I want to have some clay and silt in there, not just pure sand. So um, I'm spraying down the sides to get rid of this uh, unesthetic uh, ring of organic detritus. Rotate this so we can spray the other side while I hold my uh, camera in the other hand. So right now, there's not much to look at, but I can already tell that this thing is going to accelerate like crazy in growth. And over the next few days, we're going to see something, this, these stems get really, really tall. Although the second one is really slow to move, so I don't really know what's going on with that. I've never experienced uh, polyembryonic germination of an avocado seed. Although this avocado series has gone off to a very slow start, that's just the nature of avocado germination. It takes forever. It stays 68. I water more to the point where some muddy water came out of the bottom through those pinholes. And I think these two growing series, this and the mango in a tube, basically show that the width of the vessel you're planting in doesn't really matter. It's the depth of the soil that's really beneficial. So there are leaf-like structures on the sides. I don't know if those will all become tiny leaves that don't really go anywhere. Uh, the curvature is due to phototropism. I'll rotate the tube tomorrow and straighten this out, hopefully. So the leaves are coming in. They're sort of a mild yellowish green. The second mover has some foliage, although it doesn't look like it's going to shoot up as high. There are spider mite webbings. I don't see any spiders but I see tiny webbings and tiny spider mites uh, here and there on this and my mango seedling. So I'm just going to use a Q-tip and get rid of all that nasty crap and hopefully by spraying some distilled water every few days it'll counter the hot and dry conditions that spider mites love. This episode got off to a glacial start with nothing happening in between me burying the seed on day two after it cracked open and day 50, but it's been pretty exciting ever since. I expect based on the size of the seed that growth will be torrid and bamboo-like over the next few days and weeks. I'm really looking forward to seeing some exciting growth that I'll be sharing with you in the next episode. So thanks for watching and please stay tuned.